all of my help comes from you. The God you've allowed us to pray, to give, and to testify of your goodness. Now, God, it is time for your servant to preach. Dear God, I pray that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross. God, at least your people would not see me or hear me. But God, that they would hear you like they've never heard you before. That they would see your face. God, if there is any among us who does not know you in the part of their sin, God, I pray that your word would draw them to this altar where they might cry, Lord, what must I do with this? God, I'm your child. You promised that you never allow me to be made a show. Speak, Lord. The children are listening. Jesus name. Amen. Give our most humble obedience to God who is the head of our life. Second to his son Jesus who hung bled and died on Calvary's mountain that we all might have a right to the tree of life. To our paraclete, the Holy Ghost, the one who leads, guides, and comforts us. To this, your pastor elect, Reverend Thomas. To you, Pastor Barrow. To all of you who make up this general assembly of believers, to the officers and members, the Little Rising Sun Baptist Church, we do say thank God just for this opportunity to be here. I thank God for the Floyd family. I so love the way that they minister as a family. In an age, I'm gonna get myself in trouble already. With men loving men, and women loving women, and people taking their children to get sex changes. I thank God that there's a prophet in the Floyd family yeah. who stands as the man and the angel of that house yeah. who leads his family openly. Uh -huh. Now that might not excite you, yeah. but I bless God yeah. that I know that there are still yet men yeah. that love God yeah. that lead their family in the ways of God. Yeah. Thank God for all of the members of both House of Prayer and the First Little Rock that have joined us on today. I dare not ask you to stand for you stood already. I thank God for you um, walking along with me on this journey. I know it's been a long day and I'm not going to be before you long. Um, I thank God for my mother who was with me. Wave your hand. Is our executive pastor at the House of Prayer Baptist Church. We have Dr. Tobin who is with us. She is our pastoral care. Wait your head, Dr. She's our pastoral care pastor at House of Prayer. And I thank God uh, for Minister Dempsey, who is our youth pastor at the First Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. I thank God for our deaconess that come along with us, Sister Shirley Harris. God bless her. She stood and told her test her strong testimony. Amen. She almost let that age go, y'all. She still ain't talking how old she was. She almost let it slip. But uh, I thank God for her. I thank God for uh, I have a deacon here with me. Uh, two, three deacons here with me. Deacon Slain, Deacon Harris, Deacon Johnson. He's about to bring me a Pepsi for I preach. I say, no, I can't do that. Man. I'm a little warm, but I'm going to be all right. Uh, but I do also have a deacon in training here who is also our chief administrative officer, uh, Brother Solomon Williamston. I thank God for him. Amen. Uh, Amen. And all, of course, all of our members that are here uh, joining with me. We got uh, ushers and choir members, Amen. Amen. teaching workers, yes. 
and uh, I thank God for all of them following me over here. They telling me Herbert preach pastor because we tired, so I'm going to and preach. But it is an honor, Sister Anthony, to be invited here. Uh, your former pastor, Pastor uh, Elder Marsha Hall, uh, was a giant in my eyesight. Uh, there could be no bigger. Uh, he he didn't speak a lot. And when he did speak, I was scared because he had that deep baritone voice. So everything he said, I listened to. But as a young preacher, he would always tell me, just take your time. And, and, and that's not a lot of good advice to you, but it made a whole lot of sense to me as a young preacher. Sometimes you just got to learn to take your time. Amen. So if you would, there is a word from the Lord. And I promise I will not be before you long. Found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And while you're turning, I purposely wanted to wait till you were doing something so I could say that there is one who is here that I am so grateful for. She is indeed the love of my life. She the sugar in my cornflake. She makes my life so much easier because when I'm down, she prays for me. When I'm struggling, she's praying for me. And real love ain't got nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with want to. You got to want to love somebody. And I know she loved me. So baby, if you would, she holding our baby. I want it all in the baby. She said, oh, look at her. Oh, I see you. Girl. I'm going to hurry up for real now. Every time she look at me, I'm milk. Just wave your hand, baby. Wave your hand in here. Like, that is my wife and my baby. Yes, indeed. She telling me to hurry up too. I see her looking at me. So would you stand with me for the reading of God's holy word, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. For those of us who enjoy reading the Bible, this is a very familiar passage of scripture, but if you're not familiar with it, I pray that you hear the voice of the Lord on this evening. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 7, I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. But it reads this way. And least I should be exalted above measure mm -hmm. through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might that it might depart from me. Verse 9 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. The grass withers, the flower thereof faded away, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. In this 111th year of ministry in the life of the little rising sun, I want to talk to you very briefly from this topic. There's something amazing about grace. There's something amazing about grace. The Apostle Paul is a larger than life personality in the New Testament. His life is very transparent. He, he is one who is very zealous about the law of God. But he's ignorant about the Savior. 
He's very zealous about the law of God, so he goes about seeking people who call upon the name of Jesus Christ as both Lord and Savior to persecute them and lock them up in jail and even sometimes kill them. He, he's not shy about this testimony after his conversion because the Apostle Paul declares, I am a the chief of sinners. I, I, I've done worse than anybody can do. And if God can save me, he can save you too. Church today, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians in this 12th chapter talks about vision. He says, I don't know if I was in the body, if I was outside of the body, but I saw something that I could not even describe if I wanted to. And the text moves on and he says, it, just in case I was about to get the big head and think that I was something that I wasn't, God gave me something that I didn't even ask for. He gave me a thorn in my flesh. He gave me something that causes me pain every time I move to the left or to the right. There is something that is buffeting me. It is hurting me even to my inward part every time I move. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Little Roger, son, if you don't hear anything else I got to say, sometimes God gives us stuff we don't want. But there are sometimes God gives us things in our lives that are for our benefit, but how many of you know that pain is a part of the process? Come on, yeah. Come on. yeah. I looked around when I did sister asked the members of the Little Rising Sun to stand and to some folk that look like a small number. Come on down, say that. To some folk, some people would ask the question even better. Little Rising Sun to remain for this long. Yeah. It's a reason why God has allowed the doors of Little Rising Sun to remain open for 111 years. It's a reason why God allowed the doors to remain open even after a pandemic that tried to wipe out everybody. The reason is, Paul describes it in the text. He says, I went to God three times to get this thing removed. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that during a prayer meeting or, or when you are, you guys were on the phone and, 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 and Minister Woods was preaching that there were many prayers that were ushered up saying, God, we need more members. Mm -hmm. God, we need this. And God, we need that. And you kept going back to God time and time again. And it seemed like God just wasn't listening. Come on now. Come on now. God wasn't paying attention to the request. Oh, yeah. The text says something uh, that's important. Yes, sir. Uh, he says he asked God three times to remove the thorn. Three times. But the message he received from God was no. Yeah, no. no. Mm. I knew I wasn't gonna get no amens right there, so the pause. <laughs> it's just that I, I don't mind pausing. I don't mind waiting. I'm, I'm gonna wait for you to catch up. Yeah. God said no, no. Yeah. Yeah. that's the part of God that a whole lot of folks don't like everybody like the yes God the God that give you money when you want it the God that give you a new house when you want it the God that give you a new car when you want it the God that keep plenty of money in your pocket the God that gives you your dream boyfriend the God that gives you the perfect husband or the perfect wife or the perfect situation but can I tell somebody in here today you ought to thank God for every no he ever gave you you really ought to thank God you better thank God he knows how to say it. No, God is not a genie in a bottle. God is not there to grant your every wish. God is a sovereign God. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He can see way down the road. He knows what you have need of before you even ask. He tells the Apostle Paul, no, he says, but I have a remedy for you. He says, my grace, my grace is sufficient 
is sufficient. That's the crux of my message. If y'all was expecting something good, better than that, this is all I got to say. He says, my grace is sufficient. Like literally, that's my whole sermon. That's, I, I, I said all that to get to this. Two, 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 real quick, two, two, three things. The first thing is, he says, it's not just any grace. He says, it's my grace. Uh, all right, I got I got educated in the East Baton Rouge Parish School System. <laughs> as well, I'm I'm going to bag the short bus up and I'm opening the door so you can get on. He says, my grace. God says, I sent you the thorn, but I also gave you grace. The right of lamentation said that we are granted every day. We're given brand new mercy every day. Right? This grace. The grace that God extends to the Apostle Paul is not a grace that runs out at midnight. It is not like Cinderella's cart that at midnight is going to turn back into a pumpkin. No, this grace stays with you every day and every night. It's with, it, grace is there when you wake up and grace is there when you go to sleep. Grace is there when you got good words coming out of your mouth. Grace is there when you got the other kind of words coming out of your mouth too. Grace! God's unmerited favor it is what you don't deserve. God says what you don't deserve is what's going to preserve you. I wish I had some good. I know it's late. He says my grace is going to preserve you. Here it is. He says it's sufficient. When I was a child, I used to come in from school and uh, my mother would allow me to make a lunch meat sandwich. I would get three pieces of light bread. And I would go get some blue plate sandwich bread. And I would put on the bread and then I would get four pieces of lunch meat. And I would get two pieces of cheese. Yeah. And I would cut that sandwich in half with a butter knife. Yeah. And I would eat it. And then I would go back to the refrigerator and she would say, no, you ain't about to eat up all my lunch meat. <laughs> she said, that's going to hold you. Oh, Jesus, help me. That's going to hold you till dinner done. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell somebody here today is what you think it's not there for your benefit. It's what's going to hold you till Jesus come back. All I'm trying to tell you is this grace that God has given you, this grace, this unmerited favor, is what's going to get little rising sun back to where he used to be, back to where she used to be, back to how she used to serve. Because there's something amazing about grace. The old church used to sing about it. Uh -huh. They used to sing Amazing Grace. Yeah. How sweet the sound yeah. that saved yeah. a wretch. Yeah. Like, that's some good theology right there. Said, I once was lost, but now I found I was blind. Y'all went to church like I went to church. But the, the, what the text says, he says, it's this grace. Y'all don't mind if I talk about grace for a minute, right? Grace, 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 grace. I was, I was at the church. I was at the church last week, and I received an alert on my phone, and there was a vehicle fire on the interstate, and the vehicle fire was so bad that they had to shut down the interstate. Here it is. But I was going down the interstate on yesterday, and I passed by the spot where the vehicle was that caught on fire. Now, the interstate is still standing, uh -huh. but there is a residue where the fire uh -huh. was. Uh -huh. The interstate is still standing. The vehicle that was on fire is no longer there. But there 
is a snapshot left uh -huh. that something bad happened there. Yeah. But I drove by the spot. Yeah. Yeah. I made it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. That's it. Come on. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. The only thing that stopped that from being my vehicle was grace. Yeah. The only thing that kept me alive was grace. I traveled on the same interstate. I was going the same direction. I was driving a vehicle too. But God spared mine. That's grace. Oh, that, that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. Over a hundred churches closed yes, sir. Yeah. during COVID. Yes, sir. When I say closed, I'm not just talking about the doors closed. No, they ceased to exist yeah. in our local area. Yeah. Over 100 churches yeah. didn't make it. Yeah. All right. But Lil Rising Sun did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. That's great. That wasn't good enough for you. That wasn't good enough for you. All right. So, Grace. Grace, right? You went to sleep last night. You had that good sleep. You slept so good when you woke up this morning. You had cat mat in your eyes. You had to peel your eyes open. You had drool all down your lip. When you got up this morning, all the bed covers was flipped up and turned like a, a tornado had been through your room because all and all cross were every way but straight but grace woke you up this morning grace started you on your way grace helped you put your clothes on this morning grace put food in your belly grace kept your family circle together anybody know about grace he said he's grace it's sufficient. I'm done after this. He says, For my strength is made perfect in we. I know it seems tough. Black churches all across the southern region of the United States are struggling financially because there are so many deficiencies between us and our counterparts. White men make any money they want to make. Every time LSU builds something, hire their friend. They enrich one another. But they tell us we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstrap. Women make less money doing the same job as a man. Our teachers, our educators are going into schools, sometimes COVID-infested schools with subpar HVAC systems and, and with nobody in the office that's going to take up for them when these children, ignorant parents, come on campus. The Bible tells us that it was true then mm -hmm. and it's true now that God's strength is made perfect when we it's difficult to pass the church with no people. Y'all, y'all, y'all gonna get with me in a minute. It's hard to revitalize a community. That don't want revitalization. It's hard to revitalize a community when folk don't want to get up and go vote. It, it, it's hard, Reverend. It's hard to restart a machine that's been dormant for so long. But that's why I thank God. Mm. That the text tells me that grace is what's going to preserve me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my weakness is what's going to make me strong. Yeah, yeah. It's when our churches seem like yeah. they're at their worst. Right. It's when God shows up yeah. at his best. Yeah. I remember in the text when God sent Moses uh -huh. to Egypt. Yeah. 
And he told Pharaoh, let my people go. I'm reminded of the words of Pharaoh as he snickered and grinned. Who do you think you are, Mr. Big Shot? Coming into my palace. Telling me what I'm going to do. And Moses said, well, I'm not coming in my own name. But I am that I am sent me. And I am saying that you ought to let his people go. Well, uh, Moses had no strength. Moses had no power. The only thing Moses could do is tell Pharaoh what God said. And the Bible says, this is right here for you, Reverend Thomas, that God made the heart of Pharaoh hard. And the more Moses told, the angrier Pharaoh got.